This fighter got into the cage with a full-blown injury, limping into the cage, and still won the fight. UAE Warriors Arabia lightweight champion. When Hamad Yahya began his training at the age of 14, he faced a challenge. There were no MMA gyms in Dubai, but he never gave up. And just last week, a groundbreaking moment. Hi, my name is Mohamed Yahya, the first Emirati to be signed to UFC. His determination led him to cross paths with MMA trainer and UAE gym owner Tam Khan, where he honed his skills and began his fighting career. We always had a dream that we'll make the first ever Emirati fight on a big stage. And through hard work and perseverance and dedication, alhamdulillah, it's a dream come true. If you could fight someone, who would it be? You have to look in this camera and you have to call them out. First, I have a very tough opponent in front of, my, uh, in front of me. After I beat him, I'll fight for someone else. Hi, Mohamed Yahya. Uh, first of all, congratulations on being the first Emirati to be signed by the UFC. How do you feel? Thank you so much. Uh, I'm feeling great, obviously, this opportunity of a lifetime, uh, something I've been looking forward to my whole life. I kind of visualized being in the UFC and now it's actually happening. I thought it would have been earlier, but everything happens at the right time, so I'm really happy to get to uh, showcase my skills on the highest platform in the world. Yeah, so how are you finding all this like newfound media attention and all this kind of stuff? Finding it great. Uh, I've, I've been in UAE Warrior, I'm the UAE champion of Arabia, so I kind of get a lot of media, doing a lot of media week and uh, interviews and uh, lead up to the fight they come and film me but obviously now it's way more because it's the biggest step and uh, it's history being made right now so are you, are you finding it distracting or is it okay i'm never distracted i do my training and then in between uh, while i'm recovering i do the media so tell us a little bit about you tell us what fueled your determination to continue you know, fighting in the sports this is one of the hardest sports in the world. I don't know. When I was a kid, I was just, I didn't really like school. I, I, I had a lot of anger in me when I was a kid. I don't know where from. I had a great childhood and everything. And uh, me and my brother was used to watch fighting on TV. And I kind of love, fell in love, with, uh, in, in love with the sport. Like a kid would fall in love with playing football or something. But our sports is a bit aggressive. It might look crazy and stuff to you. But at the end of the day, it's just a sport. How keep yourself like mentally fit as you are physically fit are there any kind of morning rituals uh, yeah the biggest mental state fit for anyone i feel in this world is uh stops depression and everything and it's really easy it's just praying and having faith in god and that takes you a really big step in life and uh, protects you from all evil protects you from all negative energy and yeah. yeah so. so I realize, you know, I realize a lot of MMA fighters are quite religious. What do you think is the intersection between, you know, being such a devout Muslim or a devout Christian, whatever the religion is, and MMA as a discipline? Is there yeah. some kind of relation? Uh, well, in our religion, it's not. No one really knows if it's allowed to fight in, in our religion, but it, it depends how you take it, how you see it. So if you see it as in a sport and you're not trying to go to hurt people, even though that's what we're doing. But... Uh, it's a big part of being strong mentally and uh, stepping out and just leaving it, leaving the outcome up to God and having faith in God. Knowing that you did your time, you did your hard work, now it's, the rest is up in God's hands. So there's a huge element of like letting go once you're in that ring, right? Yeah, once the day, uh, close, uh, doors are closed, uh, kill or die, yeah, literally. And you have to have so much faith also in the work that you've done prior to that. Yeah, like this fight's coming up on uh, the 21st of October. I've been training since March, so that's more than six, seven months. Uh, I've even traveled for my training camp, so I'm in really good shape now. And uh, you can see how, how much hard work it, it needs to be done. Amazing. So take us a little bit back. Take us back to your childhood when you first started MMA at the age of 14. What was one of the biggest struggles? Because I heard that there weren't that many MMA gyms back in the day. Yeah. How did you train? The biggest struggle was to find an MMA gym. And there was literally none when I was at the age of 14. So uh, we started in a Kung Fu gym in some school and uh, dojo, you know. But I learned a lot of stuff there to be disciplined, uh, like the hardship, the, like just discipline of the whole fighting game. And then uh, Tam Khan eventually came along. He opened the first MMA gym, which was Contender MMA. I'm not sure what year. And then a few years later, he opened the first uh, Dubai Fighting Championship. 
So I, uh, I ended up joining in that in, in semi-pro contest, ended up winning my two first fights. And then after those two fights, uh, went to pro. But yeah, it was really hard to find fights in Dubai and I had to travel for my amateur fights, go to the UK and uh, Jordan and all these countries to actually get fights. Yeah, so who supported you on this journey? Um, you know, the travel, the, uh, you know, you, you, this is you full, doing this full time. So who has been your biggest support? Yeah, back in the day, it was uh, obviously my family. They supported me. They see how dedicated I was. And my dad's a big sports man. He loves football. He loves all sports. And he see how dedicated I was. So I told him school is not for me, even though he tried to a few times. I told him uh, there's no way, there's no point. And then he see how fully committed I was. And I kept making him, uh, making him proud of all the big performance I was winning. And uh, yeah, so he supported me a lot through my training and then uh, now I am supported by many people. Uh, DCT of Abu Dhabi Travel and Tourism, Abdelman, His Excellency, uh, Tam Khan, he supports me with my training with everything I need. So I'm blessed, I could say I'm privileged to be fine in the UFC representing my country. So tell us a little bit about your background. Um, you are half Emirati and half British, correct? Yeah. yeah. Nice. And you grew up, where did you grow up exactly? I grew up my whole life here since I was a kid. Uh, my mom and dad got married uh, like 45 years ago. So she's lived here her whole life basically. And uh, yeah, I don't really go much back to the UK. Just I used to go compete there and then uh, mostly in UAE. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about the MMA. Have you met Dana White yet? No, no, no. I'll meet him after the fight, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. Okay, once you meet him, is there anything that you have in mind that you want to say to him? I'm not sure. We'll go at the moment, you know, it's still a long way around. But yeah. definitely we'll say something to him to get him notice me. Yeah. What do you think is your discipline? What, where, where do you shine, do you think? Uh, well, I started off with the MMA, so mix. So I'm good at jiu-jitsu, uh, kicking, uh, wrestling. But... Uh, well, I would say back in the day there, wouldn't, there wasn't much competitions uh, for wrestling and jiu-jitsu. It was mostly just stand-up kickboxing and when I traveled. So I was 22 and 0 in kickboxing. And then uh, I said after time open up the first mixed martial arts uh, fighting championship, I joined that. So I would say kickboxing. Tell us a little bit about the toughest part of this sport. Obviously when I was watching you guys train, a lot of injuries could come out of what you're doing. Yeah, so the toughest part is you, obviously you need to watch out for injuries uh, and at the same time it's a lot of work uh, it's not just mentally but physically on your body uh, I've trained four or five hours a day uh, sometimes you have to diet and uh, sleep is really necessary so I'm in bed by 10 or 11 maximum mm -hmm. to get my full growth hormone and it is kind of a lonely road but it's, it'll be worth it at the end yeah I mean I can see I can see that you are a super disciplined person, very focused. How do you find time to relax and restore? What do you do in your spare time? In my spare time, uh, literally the only day I have off is Saturday in training camp. So I spend it in a, a spa, even uh, like a lunch pool, jacuzzi, sauna, and then just relax by the sun. So I use my day off to recover basically for the next week coming. Nice. So tell us a little bit about the story of, uh, you told me that when you fought with the torn ACL once. Yeah. I was literally, I tore my ACL literally in this area where we sat right here. <laughs> uh, the cursed area. <laughs> uh, so I was sparring two weeks before the fight, I got kicked to the back of my leg and uh, fully blew my ACL and meniscus. How does that feel? Uh, Obviously, I didn't take much no, uh, notice of it, but okay. uh, it happened in training. I had to stop training, obviously, and then uh, I went to see the doctor, and he told me, you have a full-blown ACL, and I'm sad that I remember looking at him, and I'm like, because I've been training four or five months for this fight, continuous, and then he's telling me I can't fight, so I'm like in shock, and then uh, I don't say anything, just take the results, I leave. I was speaking to my coach, and I said, would you let me, you guys, fight? He's like, let's, let's go. We put so much uh, effort into this. And uh, there was no way, because it was the first big deal I ever got, the biggest fight of my life, you know, and i never seen that many figures on the paper, you know, so I took the fight and I ended up winning. So it just shows to go that your mentality really ca carries you in the sport. 
that's crazy because that's just two months after you tore your ACL. <laughs> two weeks after. Two weeks. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Don't do this at home, kids. That's like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Being a full-time fighter is demanding. It requires a lot of uh, focus. Do you have any pre-fight rituals, or uh, what do you do? How do you, do you manifest? Do you visualize? What do you do exactly before a fight? Uh, yeah, there's a lot of visualization, but it's not just uh, the fight week. It's throughout the whole training camp. So. Uh, Visualizing just walking out, uh, the referee, uh, the people putting Vaseline on your face, that's uh, checking if you have your protection and mouth guard, just soaking up the energy of the crowd, actually stepping in the cage, getting announced, which is going to be crazy. Is uh, my whole life I've been seeing Bruce Buffer announce fighters, yeah, you know, the legend of the sport. So finally, he's going to announce my name in the card and probably going to give me goosebumps, but yeah, visualize everything. Amazing. What's your walkout song? I'm not sure about that. I'm going to leave it up to a few people to see what they decide. Amazing. And if you could fight someone, you know, any person of your choice, who would it be? You have to look in this camera and you have to call them out. <laughs> uh, one step at a time. First, I have a very tough opponent in front of, my, uh, in front of me. Okay. But after I beat him, I'll probably call someone out. Nice. Just before we go, tell us, why do you do this sport? It's so dangerous. It's so hard. Why do you do it? It's not really that dangerous, uh, it's just we love, uh, it's basically an art, I would say. It's like a, an artist where they draw, where uh, a musician would sing. We just express our feelings, but at the same time, we really love it. And uh, I don't know, I don't know why we fight, but we just enjoy it. You just need to do it, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much for being with us today and good luck on October 21st, right? Thank Amazing. you so much. Good luck.